today I've come into the mews to find that we have our first fairly large feather which seems to be a right hand wing feather. So that's the first large feather molt that I've seen. We've got all this down here and these smaller feathers which there's been a few of them about, some slightly larger than that. But that one there, today's the first time we found this size feather. My next job I need to do is work on the news. The entrance, which I've been using as a small weathering when I'm outside, is nowhere near big enough. It's, I do use it, but even the netting around the outside all needs taken off and I need to put in there some upright struts so it's not going to damage his feathers. I'm also going to build something on the front of the news so he's got a bigger area on the front to actually weather. Before I got Woody last year searching on YouTube and found some great channels that have been very helpful. Um, I just sent questions and get replies and always found that very very helpful. But I kept looking for more and more. So when I got Woody I decided to make these videos. So if anyone is um, you know gonna do this sit going to do this little hobby or sport, there's just more to see. I sort of documented my journey and, and now I'm documenting the journey with the mole, what I'm seeing, um, my experiences. And at the moment it's been about three weeks, so all I've really seen at the moment is him shedding a couple of feathers. I hope this helps someone. I'm not teaching because uh, I haven't been doing it long enough but all I can say is the experience I've had and it's been fantastic. So anyone that's getting a hawk or a house hawk you've got good times ahead but it is hard work. So this, this year is my first month myself, Woody's. Lots of things are changing. Normally he would have almost pulled it out of my hand, but he's not so keen, he just looked at it for a little while. So he's you know he's not he's at his fat weight now and he's weighing two pounds two ounces, just over two pounds two ounces now. The way I'm doing it is to keep him slightly mad. I know a lot of people leave their views for a shoe, but this is way I'm doing it, I'm keeping it slightly like man. The end result is the end result, which is the important thing. Everyone's got different ways. There is, doesn't seem to be one way, but it's the end result that matters. So if you can achieve that end result and you've got your hawk coming back and hunting, what does it really matter? As long as you don't push that hawk past what he wants to. So my, my way, how I've done this, is I've never pushed him. And so from the first day I had him in that news, I didn't go in there and get him on my glove and keep him there manning for hours or whatever some people may do or may not do. The only time he was on my glove was when I had food in it. So if he didn't want to go on that glove and eat that food, I put him down and I came back out. Then I went back in again. 
Big team up. Picked him up and if he didn't eat, I put him down and come out. And then when he did start eating, even then, once he'd eaten that food, I put him down and I came out. The only time I picked him up was when I had food. So I never I never went through a process of keeping him on that glove when he didn't want to be on there, because the only time he wanted to be on there was whilst he was eating. It, 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 I slowly built up the length of time he was on the glove. As soon as I could, I got him onto the, a pigeon wing, so he was spending more time, but he was eating. So he was sitting there because he wanted to be there, eating. Not because I wanted to man him for hours and just keep him there, like you can do, I know you can do, but this is just the way I chose to do it. There's, there's so many ways, but I've chosen that way. So I'm taking him just a little bit, not out of his comfort zone, but on, on the edge. I know what he likes and doesn't like. Normally he would snatch that out of my hand. So he's obviously not, he's not that hungry. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna feed him in a minute some rabbit and from the perch and he'll eat what he wants and leaves the rest. I've just literally got this rabbit leg bone to sit here with him while I'm talking. He's pretty much grown up with these dogs in the garden. I and mean, know he's not frightened of them at all, and he knows this one flushes food out for him. So he's seen him working, and they've been working together for a long time. So, you know, it, 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 he's totally fine with this. I'm going to move the dog away slightly, though. I could see he was just on the edge of being uncomfortable there. So I've moved the dog. But that's what I mean about keeping your, or my way is keeping the hawk on that line of being not uncomfortable, not pushing. What I've noticed with this hawk when he's out, which is not, it's not been often this year because of the bird flu, so I'm only, he's only out when I'm outside. Um, to clean the muse out or feed him and then I've been putting him back so he's only out here whilst we're feeding or cleaning because of the avian bird flu which is should be coming to an end soon I hope but Woody has a terrible fear of hang gliders and I can understand why because they must seem like a massive predator so he's okay with aeroplanes and he's okay with all, all the buzzards that are around seagulls but as soon as um, a micro light or a hang glider, powered glider comes over, he's bait, he starts baiting a bell and he hates it. So I'll have to basically go over there and put him away for a minute if I see one. Helicopters is the same. In this last week, Woody has now started using his bath inside the muse. He didn't bath before. Only, only when we'd been out hunting and his weight was slightly up and there was a puddle, he'd be in that puddle and I could see every time we saw a puddle he was looking at it and I, 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 in the end I knew that what he was like so every time we saw a puddle I took him the opposite way unless it was at the end of hunting then it didn't matter but because he had his telemetry on I didn't want that sort of being submerged. Woody is still quite tame. He's not gone feral. And I didn't want him going completely feral. I didn't want to leave him in there. That was my choice. I could leave him in there. And I could just let that news get all smothered in new feathers and rubbish. But I don't want to. I prefer to do this get him out and keep that clean and then use disinfectant so that's all good and then come the time to reduce his intake and then start flying it's just going to be easier for me but saying that next year I might do differently 
this is you, you're hawk, hawking, you, you, know, you can change, you can do things differently. Everyone does things differently, from what I understand. You know, I don't weigh him as much as I was weighing I might weigh him every couple of days. I was only doing that for my own benefit, so I can understand about this mould. If and there's another reason, if I put him in there and don't weigh him and just keep feeding him, I don't know what's going on. But this way, I've actually watched what's going on. I've watched his attitude with his weight gain, and I've seen him change with his weight gain. So I feel now that when it does come to hunting, I've got that little bit more understanding of what the weight's all about, and also how much weight I have to drop off, which has surprised me, because what he was hunting at is quite different to what he is now. So there's, there is quite a range there, and it gives me a better understanding of, of that. As I weighed in this morning and his weight was two pound to 30, and when I was flying and hunting, this was the first season I'm talking about, so next season I'll start again. I don't know, I cannot, use, I'm not going to use them weights. This may be a little guide, but I'll do all what I did this year again and watch him. So if he's two pound two now, roughly, and he was flying at one seven roughly then that's um so that's three six if I'm right I think that's eleven ounces it's put on label right there. So that that's a massive amount of weight he's put on. Now whether he's He's at his fat weight, but can he be past his fat weight? I don't know. Can he be obese? I don't know, but he seems to be eating only what he wants. Now, he hasn't eaten today, and that was a small piece of meat on there, and he doesn't want it. He's choosing not to eat, he's just sitting there. So he's obviously, who knows what he needs. So as I say, um, Next season, I'll do the same again. I'll drop his weight down and I'll probably start flying him. Depending on what he's doing on the creons, it, I'd say it'd be about 110. And then I'll take him out and see what he's like. But it won't be until I see what he's doing, whether or not he needs to come down. But you can see that sweet spot when you've, if you've been for a season and you've watched and you know you're hawk, take it into account. I was flying every single day. I didn't miss any days. I wasn't doing weekends, which if you're working, that's what you've got. I had every day to read this hawk. And I knew, I knew that sweet spot where if he was slightly up, he wouldn't be quite so responsive. And you get him down to that sweet spot and he was just so on form. It was just, he would be following me through the smallest peep on that whistle and he'd be straight back and he'd be hunting fantastically. He's going to have all that knowledge, I'm going to have all the knowledge I've picked up. We've got our field skills better. He's going to have all his adult feathers. I just had a visit a little while ago from a couple of ducks. Well, there, was a, there was two males and a female jostling for position. Like we do. And they was on the pond and the hawk was sitting out there just sitting on the perch having a look and I thought then uh, they were brave, them ducks, or they didn't see the hawk. I wondered what they would do if the hawk's in the garden. Of course he's a fat weight so he wasn't really bothered. Hey. Leave that. Hey. Leave that. It's not yours.